Hallelujah. Bless the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Father, we bless you. Father, we give you praise. We thank you, O God, in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Lord God. We thank you, Father. Jesus, we thank you, Father. We thank you, Lord God. We thank you. 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 Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. We bless you on tonight. We give you praise. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Father. We give you praise. We honor you, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God. in the thing which you send it. Father, we give you praise on tonight, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your greatness, Lord God. We thank you, Father, that besides you that we can do nothing besides you there is no other and Lord God without you we can do nothing so Lord God we thank you on tonight we give you praise Father we thank you Lord God for your kindness we thank you for your mercy Lord God we thank you Father for your hand of grace Lord God that is upon us in this hour in this time oh God in the name of Jesus as we receive from you as we receive Father your word Lord God on tonight Lord God we thank you for the manifestation of your goodness and your greatness in Jesus mighty name in Jesus mighty name I'm just going to go in into doing some teaching on tonight as far as the area of healing and either even talking about Jesus um, the ministry of his of healing amen Amen. Because the word said that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And so, with that being said, we're just going to go into the teaching on tonight. And I just bless those that are coming on and those that will come on after um, after the live. after. And so, I thank you for all that's coming on, on tonight. And I just give the Lord praise. Hallelujah. You're going to need your Bibles because I'm going to go into some scriptures. Hallelujah. Go into some scriptures on the night. Hopefully you all are having a good night. Amen. 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 Let's see. Let's first. Let's go into. I'm going into Matthew the 14th chapter and the 14th verse. 14th chapter and the 14th verse. Let's get started. The 14th chapter and the 14th verse. Amen, amen, amen. Amen, amen, amen. And we just, you know, just going to see how, you know, how Jesus first, how he operated in the, um, in the area of, of healing, in the area of deliverance. And we see in the scriptures of how Jesus as the scripture says that Jesus went about and he healed, you know, and so that's one um, thing that we're going to talk about. And many a times, you know, we we wonder why, you know, the, the manifestation of healing is not manifested on the level that it should be manifested on. And primarily it's because of um, sometimes it can be the area of our own heart in operating in the area of healing. And, you know, when we read in scripture and we're just going to read, let's go to Matthew 14, 14. And Jesus went forth and saw a great multitude and was moved with compassion towards them. And he healed the sick. 
one area that we that we struggle in in the body of Christ, we struggle in the area of having compassion. We have to understand that when we are operating in the area of of healing and and deliverance, we have to have compassion. Our heart has to be compassionate towards the people that we are ministering to. And earlier, I was actually having a a, um, a conversation with a few people concerning um, how we are to operate, um, you know, when ministering to others. And usually what ends up happening is that we have so much, we've had so much offense and so much ought against each other in the body where, you know, the, the, the when the anointing comes upon us, you know, we don't pick and choose who should re, should receive healing and who should receive deliverance. And as a post I had made earlier, I was speaking about, um, you know, the offended huggers, but it wasn't so much in the form of, um, of, of a person, you know, going through their own internal, um, areas in their own life where they don't know how to receive from others, but the area of when we, um, when we hold back, when we hold back those areas of, of ministering to others because we lack compassion. But again, when the anointing begins to come upon us, we don't pick and choose, you know, who should receive ministry, who should receive healing, who should receive deliverance. The 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 anointing is is Christ. The anointing, you know, the the anointing comes to break and destroy the yoke. And when the power of God comes upon us, it, you know, we're not trying to think of um, who, who should be receiving healing and sh who should not, you know, you're not thinking about that when you're ministering to people because you're operating in a place of compassion and you're looking to see people be healed and you're looking for people to be delivered. Amen. And so we have to get out of, out of our own concept and out of our, really out of our own fleshly ways and allow God to do what he wants to do and allow the Holy Spirit to move the way that he wants to move and bring it forth healing and bring it forth deliverance. Because again, Matthew, going to Matthew, the 14th chapter and the 14th verse, you, you know, we don't see anywhere in scripture where, you know, it, it said that Jesus healed all, you know, he healed all. He didn't, he didn't heal those that, um, he found worthy to be healed. You know, he didn't, he didn't heal those that, that, um, that only, you know, that, you know, I mean, I mean, the, the scripture says that, you know, he healed all and all means all. So again, Jesus went forth and saw a great multitude and was moved with compassion. So ask yourself, how are you being moved? How are you moving? Are you moving with compassion? When the Lord tells you to do something, when you begin to pray for someone, are you moving with compassion? You know, are you moving with the compassion of the Lord on the inside of you? And so um, let's move on from that scripture and let's go on to Matthew 8, 16 and 17. Matthew 8, 16 and 17. Matthew 8, 16, 17. And I'm just going to give also the definition of compassion. It is a suffering with another, um, having a temper or disposition to pity, um, inclined to show mercy, merciful, having a heart that is tender and easily moved by the distress, sufferings, wants, and infirmities of another. Blessings. Thank you for coming on. And so that's a, that's one of the definitions to compassion. Actually, I got that definition from the Westper, um, from the, yeah, the Webster dictionary. So, um, so, you know, we have to be able to move in compassion. So let's go to this. Let's go to Matthew, the eighth chapter, the 16th and 17th verse. And, you know, how, how, you know, looking at how, how are people going to be healed? How are they going to be delivered? Again, the scripture says that faith coming by hearing and hearing the word of God, you know? And so the more that we begin to hear the word, the more that we begin to get into the word. And this is why I tell people a lot of times to start, you know, get into the word of God. Don't, 
you know, don't, don't rely on someone else to get in the word for you. It is, it is for your benefit and not only your benefit, but it's also for the benefit of those that God is going to send your way or God sends, you know, um, send you to, you have to be able to have the word on the inside of you because without, without the word, nothing is going to happen. And, and so let's go again to 17. I mean, excuse me for Matthew 8, 16, 17. Okay. When, when the even was come, they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils, and he cast out the spirits with his word, with with his word, <laughs> you know, with his word, you know. And again, if you don't have the word of God in you, then how can we cast out spirits with the word? You know, the, the, the devil's not going to hear anything else except for the word. Okay, so he cast out spirits with the word and healed all that were sick. There go that word again, all. All that was sick, that it may be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah, the prophet, saying himself took our infirmities and bared our sicknesses. Now, let's go to Isaiah, the 53rd chapter. Let's go to Isaiah, the 53rd chapter. And again, we just laying down the foundation of the ministry of healing. Isaiah, 53rd chapter. Mm-hmm. Amen. Thank you for coming on. Right. 53rd chapter. Let's start at the first verse. Who have believed our report? And to whom is the armor of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of a dry ground. He have no form or comeliness. And when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid as if it were our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he bored our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. The fifth verse. But he who was wounded for our transgression, he was bruised for our iniquities, and the chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. Amen. So, you know, in in you know, we have to understand that um that it's a covenant right, it's our covenant right to be healed. You know, and so many times we hear we hear people wondering, you know, is God going to heal me? Especially as believers, you know, we, we ask the question, you know, I wonder if God is going to heal me or if healing is for me. If you are a believer, then it's your covenant right to be healed. You have a right to healing. <laughs> you know, you have a right to be delivered. Amen. And so, so let's go to first Peter, the second chapter in the 24th verse. Second chapter. In the 24th, 24th verse. First Peter, second chapter, and the 24th verse. Just laying the foundation before I get into it. <laughs> Amen. Thank you for coming on. Appreciate you. The first chapter. Let's say first Peter two twenty four. Who his own self bore our sins in his own body on the tree, that we being dead to sin should live unto righteousness, by whose stripes we were healed. Thank you for coming on. Thank you. So we have a covenant right. We have a covenant right to healing. You know, God, you know, Jesus died so that we can be here. You know, not only that we are delivered from sin, not only have we been delivered from, you know, have we also been delivered from, you know, the, the, the power of hell, but we also receive, we've been delivered also from sickness. We've also been delivered, amen, so we can receive that healing that God has already provided for us. Now, let's see. Ooh. Let's go to Colossians. Excuse me. Sorry. Let's go to Colossians. No. Let me get my scriptures right. I apologize. Let's go to Galatians. 
before I go there. Let's go to Galatians, the third chapter. And the 13th verse. Mm -hmm. Amen. And you know, when the scripture says that by his stripes, we were healed. We were healed. You know, so really, technically, we are already healed. We are already healed. We just have to receive the healing that already been provided for us. Going to the third chapter and 13th verse. Christ have redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, cursed is everyone that hangeth on the tree. So again, Jesus had already took, he had already took our sickness, the thing that were plaguing us, the things that, that the diseases, the, the, even the diseases of the world, you know, all of that he put on himself and it's been nailed to the tree. We've been redeemed from that. We've been redeemed from that. So let's go over to my other scripture. Trying to find the scripture that I want to read. Let's see. Uh, first, uh, the first chapter of Colossians and the 13th verse. And the 14th verse, excuse me, as well. Who have delivered us from the power of darkness and has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. So we, again, we've been translated. We've been, we've been translated out of the power of darkness from the grips of darkness, from the grips of the enemy, and, and we've been translated into the kingdom of his dear son. So what, what is in the kingdom? In the kingdom, there is healing. In the kingdom, there is deliverance. So if you're in the kingdom, then, then healing is a right. You know, you have a right to be healed. You have a right to be restored. He had, Jesus had already taken away the part that was, that was in the way of our healing, you know, of our deliverance. He already removed that. The thing about it is that we carry the thing that hinder, hinder us from receiving. I'm going to get into that. The things that hinder us from receiving our healing and our deliverance is, let's go, actually, I'm going to go into that now. Go into Mark, the sixth chapter and the fifth verse. I'll tell you what stop what stops our healing and our deliverance. Mark the sixth chapter. Mm -hmm. And the fifth I'm going to go, I'm going to start at the sixth verse in the third chapter. Is not this the competitor, the son of Mary, the brother of James and Jose and of Judah and Simon and are not his sisters here with us? And they were offended at him. So that's one area that, that, um, that causes us to keep, to keep us from being healed. And that's the area of offense. That was the, that's the area of offense. You know, when people, we have to understand as well, when people operate in the area of healing, you know, we, we always have to have a pure heart. We always have to have a pure heart towards the things of God. And a lot of times the reason why we're not receiving what God wants us to receive is because of our heart, because of the condition of our heart. When we don't have a pure heart towards the things of God and towards those that operate in a certain level of, of an anointing and a certain level of grace. And when we dishonor, that's another word I wanted to say about dishonor as well. When we, uh, when we are offended, when we, when we lack honor with one another. And also the other, the other area is, I'm going to go into that too, is unbelief. 
So those are three areas that hinders our our from us receiving healing and deliverance in the things of God, you know. And so we have to make sure that when we are hearing the word of God as well, and, and when we, you know, when we see people operating in, in certain levels of the anointing, we have to, we have to have honor. You know, we can't, you know, sometimes I remember there were times when people, you know, you can hear in the spirit people saying, I don't believe that, you know, I, I don't believe that. So, you know, how are you going to receive if you don't believe, if you don't believe the word, if you may not you may not like the person, you know, that is operating in what they operate in, but I guarantee you need to, you need to honor the anointing that's on your life and honor that mantle that's on your life. Because a lot of times, again, we're not receiving what God wants us to receive because of the lack of honor, because of disrespect that we have amongst one another in the body of Christ. We don't honor each other's callings. We don't honor one, one another's anointings. And we wonder why, you know, what, what God, uh, why am I not receiving? And it's just not in the area of, you know, um, of us praying, you know, spending time in the, in the Lord's presence and praying and receiving, because that's, of course, we know that's another area that we do receive, um, our healing, the manifestation of our healing and deliverance is by us being in the word of God. And so, you know, but at the same time, God does use people, you know, God uses people because there's anointing that, that, that is, up, that is upon us. To do the work of the ministry. And it's not just, you know, we, 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 we have a tendency to think that the work of the ministry is just in the area of raising people up to prophesy or, um, or raising people up as, as an apostles and everything, but there's more to what it, what it means to raise people up in different areas. We don't teach enough on the areas that we need to teach on. We don't teach on enough. And that's one area of healing that we don't teach on enough in the body of Christ. So people can be healed and they, they can be delivered. And also, you know, we have to be able to, you know, we have to, amen. Thank you for coming on and thank you for putting those scriptures in. I appreciate you. And, um, you know, so we have to begin to examine ourselves when it comes to the things of God. And again, you know, when it comes to raising, you know, raise people up and really, and when I say raise up means to disciple. So when we disciple people, are we discipling in the areas that God is telling us to disciple them in? We have to disciple them in the whole man, not just part of, you know, not just what, what is the demand that's out there in, you know, in the ministry in in the body of Christ at the time but we need to we need to start training and developing people according to the word of God and according to the whole man for the body of Christ you know and so um we got to get back into teaching it all you know and we have to get back into teaching people according to the word of God so again the three areas the three areas that that blocks healing again is offense, um, lack of honor, and unbelief. Offense, the lack of honor, and unbelief. Amen. So let's go to Luke, the fourth chapter in the 18th, in the 18th verse. Thank you for coming on. The fourth chapter in the 18th verse. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he have anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He have anointed me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and recovery, recovering of the sight to the blind and set at liberty them that are bruised and to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And so, you know, we have to understand what the anointing is for and what God is sending us to do. What is what is he sending us to do? The same thing that was upon Jesus is upon us. And we are supposed to do the same thing. If people are brokenhearted around us, then, you know, what are we, and, and they continue to be brokenhearted around us, then what are we doing in the kingdom? What are we, what are we doing? You know, what are we, 
you know, what are we missing? You know, we still have to be able to discern the Lord's body. We still have to be able to discern. When we go forth, we have to be able to do what God called us to do. But many of us, do we understand the anointing that's upon our life? And what do we understand when we call, when we call what we sent out to do? You know, we're not out, we're not to go out and do whatever, you know, whatever we want to do, but we have to find out, God, what are you sending me out to do? And when we look at the word, you know, according to the word, you know, the same way, you know, same thing that Jesus did. It's the same things we are to do. And let's go over to Acts the 10th chapter in the 38th verse. I like to use the word to back up when I'm saying <laughs> Thank you for coming on. Thank you all for coming on. I appreciate you. Acts, the 10th chapter and the 38th verse. And we're supposed to be doing the same thing because Jesus is our example. Hello, bless you. Thank you for coming on, Apostle. The 38th verse. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with us. Do we understand that God is with us? Do we understand that the Lord is with us? You know, when we go out, do we understand that the same thing, the same power that Jesus has, the same power that we have, the same power that, that we have? How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, and he went about doing good. Are we going about doing good? Or are we, you know, quick to cut people off? But he went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. And God was with him. And God was with him. Let's go over to Isaiah the 61st, 61 in the first chapter. I mean, excuse me, the six, Isaiah 61 and one, excuse me, sorry, Isaiah 61 and one. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord have anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He have sent me to, to bind up the brokenhearted. He have sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prisons to them that are bound. Again, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of the Lord our God to comfort all that mourn. To appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them the beauty, give them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that they might be glorified. So again, you know, what are we going forth to do? You know, we're supposed to be bringing forth deliverance. You know, we're also supposed to be bringing forth deliverance and the area I'm going to go back as well you know the area of offense the area of offense for you know with Jesus not saying you know Jesus didn't have the spirit of offense in him <laughs> you know Jesus didn't have the spirit of offense but the area of offense that that was presented you know the people was offended by him they looked at him as a stumbling block you know, just like when you going forth and you doing ministry, people are, people are going to look at you as a stumbling block. And the reason why I say that is not so much in you you causing people to fall, but if you don't control, see, they couldn't control. Excuse, they didn't. They couldn't control Jesus. The system couldn't control Jesus. Jesus operated unrestricted. You know, he operated according to the kingdom. You know. So there was no restrictions. Jesus didn't go by what 
the world system, about the world system, you know. So the only way that we're going to be able to truly operate in the things of God is that we don't operate by the world system and not allowing man to be in control, you know, of how we are supposed to operate in the kingdom. And I believe that's why, that's the that's area why the body of Christ has been so under restricted because we have allowed the system of the world to be able to dictate to the church how the church is supposed to operate. How the church is supposed to operate. So to the world, we we are, you know, they are offended, and not only just to the world, but even to those that's in the church. We they look at us as as a stumbling block because we cannot be controlled, you know, cannot be controlled. And people would get offended and see again, people would get offended and see you as a, a stumbling block when they can't do what they want to do with you, when they can't control you. Again, Jesus could not be controlled nor restricted. He did not operate by the world system, but by the kingdom. And that is rulership. He understood his rulership. He understood you know, even though Jesus is God himself, he's still in the earth realm. He still understood his his place of authority. And until we understand our place of authority, then we will always remain restricted by the world system and by those that even some that's in the body of Christ that even sees us as, a, as an offense. So that's why a lot of people are unable to receive because they because they're offended. They're offended by you, <laughs> you know. They offended by you, you know, and and not even understanding that what you're carrying, they need. They need what you're carrying, you know, and until we get to the place of understanding and honoring again, we honor those that that God, you know, God sends and God. Um, God placed that anointing upon because we all, you know, when you're in the body of Christ, you have an anointing. You know, and some people say, well, I don't, you know what, I don't have, when you in the body of Christ, when you become born again, the anointing is on the inside of you. You have the, you have the same anointing, the same grace that Jesus had when he was in the earth. You have the same thing, but it's up to you to use it. <laughs> it's up to you to use it. It's up to all of us to use it. It's up to all of us to use what God has placed on the inside of us. And if we don't use it, then we're held accountable. We're held accountable for what we don't use, you know, what he has invested in us. And that's not so much in we, you know, we have to ask people what God has placed. We have to be able to get into the word of God for ourselves. And we have to be able to ask the Holy Spirit. The Lord is the one, you know, he gave us the Holy Spirit for a reason. And that reason is, to, you know, to lead and guide us into all truth. And the Holy Spirit is our teacher. He teaches us. And yes, we may have other people. We may have those that's in the body of Christ. We may have, you know, the fivefold ministry. Yeah. You know, but we cannot place the responsibility upon those that's in the fivefold. You still have, we still have a responsibility to study the word for ourselves. We still have a responsibility to get to find out what it is that God has called us to do. You know, and so the other, you know, a few days ago, and just sharing. A few days ago, I was um, communicating with someone about, um, you know, as far as finding their place in the body of Christ, you know, but that's something that, you know, we have to, excuse me, back in, when I first got my words messed up tonight, when I first received the Lord, that was an area that the Lord really began to, really began to show me, really began to push me in. You know, and finding and seeking him for myself. And I had people that was around me that really pushed me into seeking the Lord for myself, studying the word of God for myself. They didn't, they did not, um, they didn't hold my hand in, in, in that area of, you know, you got to come to us. You got to come to me. If you want to know anything, you got to, you got to come to us. They pushed me into studying the word of God. They challenged me into studying the word of God. And I always usually talk about my Bible mentor because it was like, you know, again, he was the one that really discipled me in the word. And he, he wasn't about, you know, to sit up there and allow me to pull on 
what was on the inside of him, you know, but he was like, you got to study the word of God for yourself. And that's where he challenged me in the most. We have to have people in the body of Christ that's going to challenge you into getting into the word of God and, and, and asking, what are you, what are you studying? What are you reading? You know, and you know, because a lot of times the deception, the spirit of deception comes in because we rely so much on people instead of relying on the Holy Spirit to teach us. And the scripture tells us that he lead and got us into all truth. You know, he is the spirit of truth. And so if we're not studying the word of God and putting the word of God on the inside of us, then we go end up being deceived. So that was a side note. <laughs> that was a side note. Amen. So we just going to go back into talking about, you know, having the faith to be healed. Let's go to uh, Mark the 11th chapter. Mark the 11th chapter. And I'm going to... The 11th chapter, the 22nd, 23rd verse. Because often we hear in the, in the body of Christ, you know, you can't, you can't have what you say, but that's not scripture. <laughs> That's not scripture. Because you can have what you say. Eleven twenty two twenty three, And Jesus answering saith unto them, Have faith in God. For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart. They'll go again, doubt, you know, the unbelief. Shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he saith. So, not the mountain in your life can be, can be sickness. But you have a right to speak to that mountain. You have a right to speak to sickness. And you have a right to tell it to go. And you have a right to speak to declare the word of the Lord against sickness in order for you to be able to receive healing. So you can have what you say. And let's go again. No, let me finish reading this out first. Therefore, I say unto you what things you desire when you pray. Believe that you receive them. And you shall have them. And when you stay praying, forgive. That's another area that hinders our, our, um, our healing. When you stand and pray, praying, forgive. If you have aught against any, that your Father, which also in heaven, may forgive you your trespasses. But if you do not forgive, neither will your Father forgive. Neither will your Father, which is in heaven, forgive your trespasses. So again, that's another area that hinders our healing from coming forth. And that's unforgiveness and offense and unbelief. Unforgiveness, offense, and unbelief is what hinders our, our healing from coming forth. Another scripture I want to go to. You shall have what you say. Let's go to John before I go there. Let's go to John, the 15th chapter. I'm going to tell you how you can have what you say. <laughs> John 15 chapter. Again, a lot of times we say, you know, we hear that you can't have what you say. Yes, you can. <laughs> John 15 and 7. If you abide in me and my words abide in you. You shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. So you can have what you say. As long as you're abiding in the word of God, as long as the word is abiding in you, then you can have what you say. 
because you're not speaking your own words. You're speaking the word. You speak in Jesus' words. You speak in Jesus. And it's the it's the word that manifests. You know, it's the word that, man, that, that manifests. And so, yes, you can, as long as you're studying the word of God and the word is in you and you abiding in that word, then you can have what you say. But about it, but it got to be according to the word of God. Herein is my father glorified that you bear much fruit. So shall you be my disciples. Again, you got to be able to be in the word of God and, and allow the, the word to disciple, to disciple you. It's the word of God that's only going to work. Not, not anything else, not your own words, but the word of God. And when we decree and declare the word of God, then we see the manifestation of the word. And I'm going to give you another example. I'm going to mark the fifth chapter and the 25th verse. Give you another example of you having what you say. And a certain woman which had an issue of blood 12 years and has suffered many things of many physicians and have spent all that she had and was nothing better, but rather grew worse. When she heard of Jesus, when she heard of Jesus, when she heard of Jesus, <laughs> came in the press behind and touched his garment. For she said, if, if I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. She said. For she said, if I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. And straightway, the fountain of her blood was dried up, and she felt in her body that was healed from that plague. And Jesus, immediately knowing in himself the virtue, had gone out of him, turned him about in the press, and said, Who touched my clothes? And his disciples said unto him, Thou seest the multitude thronging thee, and sayest thou who touches me? And he looked round about to see her that had done this thing. And the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what was done in her, came and fell down before him and told him all the truth. And he said unto her, Daughter, thy faith hath made thee whole. Go in peace and be whole of thy plaque. So again, she when she spoke the word, you know, she she spoke the word before she received her healing. And not only that, the other part to pay attention to is that he called her daughter. That's a that's a covenant right. That's a covenant right. Aren't you a daughter? Aren't you a son of the kingdom? The healing belongs to you and you can have what you say. And I believe that is it. For the night, I'm going to come back again, and I thank you all for coming on. And if you need any prayer for healing, I am willing to pray for you on tonight. Amen. But I will be back on again, just sharing a little bit, doing a little bit of teaching every now and then on live. And I'm just also going to remind you that on Friday, I am starting that the rebuilding the gates and accessory that will be on the conference line. We'll be doing a conference line and I also post it and I probably will repost the post again for those that uh, wants to come in and want to chime in on the live, um, on the, 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 conference um, call. So we're doing things new in this season. You know, God is having me to do some more extra things. So just coming on for a little while and just quietly doing some, um, doing some teachings and everything. So again, you know, just going over the, the area of healing and how you can receive your healing in those areas that blocks us from receiving what God has given us. And not only uh, receiving what God has already given us and what has been purchased for us, but also in the in us operating in the ministry that Jesus also walked in. You know, we have, again, we have that same anointing. We have the same, okay, I'll be praying for you. Uh, we have that same anointing, the same anointing that 
you know, that Jesus had, we have it as well. Amen. And so I'm going to pray before I go off. Father, in the name of Jesus, Father, we thank you on tonight. Father, we thank you that your word declares it's not by might nor by power, but it's by your Holy Spirit. Father, I thank you for your Holy Spirit, oh God. Father, I thank you for your healing on tonight, Lord God, because your word even tells us that we we, we have a right to healing. You've already purchased it. You We've been redeemed from the curse of the law. You've already, you already paid the price for our healing. So, Lord God, on tonight, Lord God, we thank you for healing. We thank you, Lord God, for delivering in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I just decree and declare healing on tonight, Father. To my sister, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, I bind up the works of the enemy right now. In the name of Jesus, Father, I thank you for for healing her thy, Lord God. Father, I thank you, Lord God, for, Father, I just loose the fire um, over her thigh right now in the name of Jesus. And I just decree and declare I speak healing right now. I speak total deliverance, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Father, I give you praise. Father, I give you honor in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Father, we just thank you on tonight. Father, we thank you for restoration. Father, I even pray restoration over your people on tonight, Lord God. I thank you for restoring, Lord God, the lives of your people, the areas, Lord God, that they have been broken in. Lord God, I thank you for total restoration in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I thank you, Lord God, for um, for bringing forth deliverance in areas that they need deliverance in, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, Father, I even speak, Lord God, healing. Lord God, even over their families on tonight, in the name of Jesus, Father, I thank you, Lord God, that you're restoring, Lord God, healing, that you're restoring health, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, even in the lives, Lord God, of our families, in the name of Jesus, Father, I just, I decree and I declare, hallelujah, in the name of Jesus, your manifestation of your goodness, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, and Father, we give you praise, we give you honor, in your son, Jesus' name, we do pray, amen, we thank the Lord, we thank the Lord. We thank you, Father. We give you praise on tonight. And once again, I will be coming back on again. And I thank you all for coming on. And I thank you for um, for even for even chiming in, you know, on, on the live. Yes, we will continue to pray for the nations. And also, that's, that's one area that we're going to be praying for um, with the rebuilding of the gates. So we will be praying for the nations. We will be praying for individual uh, prayers. And um, we will be praying for families. We will, you know, just different areas that we'll begin to pray for, whatever area that the Lord is truly leading us into. So again... So again, just continue to be blessed, continue to do what God has called us all to do and just allow the Holy Spirit to just do the internal work that need to be done on the inside of us so that we can be even more um, impactful in now and in the days to come. So I thank you for coming on. God bless you. Amen.